What's up? Welcome in. Hogue and Johns with you as we get ready for the last preseason game, the third and final preseason game. It's a dress rehearsal, Adam. Mm -hmm. A dress rehearsal. Do you know the last time that we've covered a Bears dress rehearsal in the preseason? Like what you're referring to as where the starters actually play? Yes, an entire half or close to an entire first half, sometimes in the second quarter. Um, I'm going to go with in the John Fox era. Yes. So 2017. Okay. August 27th, 2017 in Nashville against the Titans. Cam Meredith got hurt in that game. That is the, the biggest, well, most unfortunate part of that game. Uh, Mike Glennon threw for 134 yards and a touchdown. Derrick Henry was stopped nine carries, 24 yards. Of course, Cam Meredith hurt. And then we had Mitch Trubisky's bomb, too. We talked about this on the podcast the other day. It was it Tree Cohen? No, 45-yard bomb down the left sideline to diving ben, receiver. Ben, Bron ben Broniker? No. It was still a receiver? In, still in the league. You looked up his stats. Uh, I looked up his – oh, uh, Anthony Miller? No, James, no. man. No, that's a – who is it? Tanner Gendry. Oh, yeah. See, that's how much I care about that. <laughs> we literally did talk about that like three days ago. <laughs> yes, we did. And you I've already – stats. <laughs> well, I keep trying to get Tanner Gentry out of my head, and you and Kevin just keep cramming it back into my brain. Naming awards after him. Let me live in peace. But that was the last dress rehearsal that we covered the Matt Nagy came in after that. And we all know we hated the preseason. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, he, he, no, don't care. Yeah. Matt Nagy did not that care about the yeah. preseason. Yeah. Uh, welcome in. Here we go. Hopefully no Cam Meredith injuries Saturday night, because I do think these guys need to play and it makes sense, but follow us on Twitter at Adam Hogue at Adam Johns. Um, of course we're actually, so here's the deal. We're going to, what are we going to do? Like come back Monday, Tuesday with a pot. We won't have our, on Saturday our, night our game week, a regular season game week. Although no, this is uh kind of just a, without the fourth preseason game, just kind of another week. So probably Tuesday, Tuesday and Thursday. Yeah. And I apologize for that. Um, it's mainly on me. I, I have a very important wedding Saturday night. Um, with my cousin who stood up in my wedding, and so um, sorry preseason game. And you have a football e game e Friday, right? I do. We up. Uh, we start tomorrow night. Carmel versus Antioch should be a good one. I'm I'm not gonna lie. I am nervously excited. I love it. It's yes. It's uh, it's a big one. So it's like a cool night too. Seventy degrees. It, it's funny Great how they, I, I was looking at the forecast too. Like even next week, it goes back into the 80s, and then like once you get to Friday, it goes. It's like something about the weather. It knows it's a high school football night. The same thing happened last year. Like it cooled down that first night, our first game, and all of a sudden it was in like the low 60s by the second half. It's hoodie, hoodie yeah. football weather. Love it, and that's the way it should be. Absolutely. Plus, nobody wants to be playing football in 80 degree weather. Uh, as much as I love the heat, yeah. 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 It's fine. Um, we're actually going to sneak in a little high school football talk at the end. But um, first of all, we got to talk about a former Bears offensive coordinator. <laughs> why? And you brought this up. I'm like, why? Well, this is going to be one of those discussions where we're going to. What did Ron about Turner it. do? Yeah. Come on, Ron Turner. What's Dow Loggins up to these days? Adam Gase? I think Dow Loggins is a. Last I saw, he was coaching in Arkansas. Back to his alma mater. His alma mater. That was last year, though, so I don't know if he's, I don't know if he got another job. No, this is Mike is Terry March. Terry Shea causing trouble? I don't. That is a guy I definitely don't know what's going on. John Shoup, up to no good? <laughs> I'm going through names here. How long? It's still the tight ends coach at Arkansas. Once the Bears offensive coordinator. I, I want to like say that. they had a good year last year. Dow Loggins turning things around in Arkansas. I don't know. All right, no, what this did is Mike, Mike March say? What did he do? Oh, he shit all over the Bears. <laughs> he ranked he ranked the NFC quarterbacks, and he put 
Justin Fields last behind Jared Goff. Um, which, by the way, if you want to make that argument, I'm, not, I'm, right, not, I'm okay with that. That's yeah, I, I, I probably wouldn't do it, but if you want to make an argument for that, fine. But his whole thing was, um, oh, let's see here. See, I, I under, what did he I'll say? read it to you. I'll read it. It's not that. It's not very long. Then there's Chicago's Justin Fields. Fields is a guy that makes a lot of mistakes and is not particularly accurate at times. He's not a quick read and react guy, and he's on a horrendous team. But I don't know if I've seen an offense that bad in talent since the 0-16 Detroit Lions in 2008. They just don't have anybody there. It's a bad football team right now. Um, it's going to be a rough career for Fields there. And I've seen a lot of really good players go to bad teams. And then their career just never takes off. And I think that's what will happen with Fields. It's going to take a long time for them to get talent there. He needs to be on a good football team behind really good players for a couple of years to learn how to play the position. But when you put a guy behind a bad offensive line and you have no talent at wide receiver and you tell him to just go make big plays, he's going to learn bad habits. You start doing stupid stuff just trying to survive. When Steve Young got to Tampa, that happened to him. He goes to San Francisco, and now he's in the Hall of Fame. I'm not comparing Fields to Steve, but that's just the situation, the scenario that he's in. Mm. That's pretty much the crux of it. Mike um, Martz almost makes it seem like you need a Hall of Fame quarterback, two Hall of Fame receivers, a Hall of Fame running back, and a Hall of Fame left tackle to make an offense work. <laughs> wow. Wow. That I mean, would what? be the greatest show in turf. Yeah, the well said. <laughs> Well said. Um, and here's the other thing. Like, look, if you want, if you want to crap on the Bears' talent, like you're certainly not the first one to do that this offseason. But how can you do that without at least? I'm not surprised you didn't mention Cole Komet. This is the guy that didn't have use for Greg Olson. Speaking of, is Greg Olson a Hall of Famer? No. You don't think he'll be in the Hall of Fame? Not sure. Not sure where his numbers stack up, but okay. I think he deserves consideration. He's a really damn good tight end, though. Mike Martz didn't have use for him. Bye-bye. So I'm, I'm not surprised he's got no respect at all for Cole Komet. Um, But to not even mention Darnell Mooney, to say that they have no wide receiver talent, it just that shows you you're just not paying attention. If you want to say they have Darnell Mooney and nobody else, okay, fine. But it just shows you you're not paying attention. Then he goes... Uh, he goes on to say they were so bad coaching wise. The head coach there, Matt Nagy, didn't know what he wanted to do with him. It's a no win situation, and I feel bad for the kid. He needs to be on a good team where he can back somebody up for a year or two. If he got to some place like San Francisco, maybe it would work out for him. But I don't see it working out at all in Chicago. Does he know they changed coaches? I don't know. Um, Does he know that they're basically trying to run San Francisco's offense now? Probably not. Okay. My initial reaction, this is what I sent. I went to my phone. I sent this to Kevin. Do Fish your research. At 543 PM last night. You know how we all get notifications on our, on our tweet machine, our, our Twitter feed. You know, I, I get the bait, uh, the bear stuff and uh, Justin Fields stuff like that. So my text to him at 543 PM last night, well, I'm out the door taking my son or going to a football meeting actually is why is Mike March being talked about on Twitter? Calvin's response. No idea. <laughs> um, I get it. It's inflammatory. Like it, it's almost to the point where like criticism of the bears, you need to like call it out a bit. Like, especially if it's like live, right. And you start ripping the bears for not having talent. Like, okay. They don't have talent. Name me their starting five offensive linemen right now. Let's see how closely you're actually following along and tell me where they were drafted. Or, you know, tell me how many receiving yards Darnell Mooney had last year. Or how Cole Komet, like what would his numbers project as after, you know, doubling's production in, in year two. I, that's the stuff I think needs to come to the conversation. Now with some of the criticism out there. I'm not, and the Bears are open to criticism. Like if you want to, rank Justin Fields as the fourth best quarterback in the division. I'm okay with that. Just look at the numbers. Yeah, it's fine with me. That's what the numbers say from last year. 100% okay with that. But at least know that Matt Nagy is not coaching the darn team anymore. <laughs> know where Matt Nagy is. I saw him on TV last week. 
Chiefs are – this is how much I care about. Maybe I'm Matt Nagy. I watched almost that entire game, and now I can't even think of who the Chiefs were playing. It's the preseason. Who were the Chiefs playing in that game? Wow. Like, I watched a lot of it. Bills, um, does it sound right? No, I don't think they were playing the Bills. Mark Tressman's face just popped up on my computer, by the way, because <laughs> oh. he also writes for this website, the 33rd whoa, whoa. team. And I like that website. I don't mean to be shitting on what they what, what Mike Martz wrote, but I mean, he. Well, no, no, here's the thing. You can. I actually like the website, too. They do a lot of good stuff. It's all like former players, coaches. That's the uh, GMs. That's the, it's actually a really cool concept, but it doesn't mean that. Um, like there, there's one thing I learned long ago, long ago is. Like you could tell which former players, former GMs, former coaches who enter the media, like do their actual homework. Yeah. And we have some darn good ones in Chicago who do their homework on the radio, on TV. But sometimes the, the national folks, when they come jumping in, you get what you get. You know, there's some unfamiliar area or infamiliar, whatever that word is, non-familiar. Um, uh, Remember when he went on TV? Yeah. He did not do his homework. I'll never forget the first time John Fox was on TV with ESPN that year. And he was actually, they asked him to talk about uh, Vic Fangio and the Bears. And like, here's a great opportunity to like provide some great insight with the guy. Like you brought him there, you know, these players. And he just like, he gave a John Fox press conference. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, I think, you know, you know, well done. It'd be well said. So I was back to coach. And my thought on that is I would have told the ESPN producer, let's not forget how things ended in Chicago between Vic Fangio and John Fox. Did not see yeah. eye to eye. And I'm putting that lightly. <laughs> All right. Well, by the way, Greg might- Olson, thanks to Kent, Greg Olson, seventh in yards, fifth in receptions, all time for tight ends. Can I but- just go back? Like oh, March, yes. trade that guy. Yes. Greg Olson in consideration for the Hall of Fame. Since you brought up Mike Martz, I went back to those. I looked up to 2008 Lions. Can you tell me who their quarterbacks were? Dan Orlovsky? It's one. 25-year-old Dan Orlovsky. Is he the starter or the backup? Um, They had a whole bunch of guys that started. <sighs> I'm trying they to. They had a I... 36-year-old John Kitna. Okay. And a 31-year-old Dante Culpepper. Oh, my God. I forgot Dante was on that team. Wow. And that was the year after Mike Martz left. Yes, the year after Mike Martz left. Where a former Bears defensive coordinator was the head coach still. Yeah, Rod Marinelli. Rod Marinelli. And Matt Millen was the uh, GM. I think he got fired midseason. He was fired in week three. Whew. So a lot of things factored into that season becoming the them becoming an 0 16 team. Pretty bad. Man, their games like weren't barely even close. Are you looking at it now? Yeah. They had some they had a few close games, but really they were forty seven to ten. <laughs> 42 to 7. Yeah. Woo. All right. Uh, good reminiscing about Detroit. Still entertaining, though, in hard knocks. Don't know. Read Dan Pompey's story on The Athletic about Dan Campbell. Yeah, I still need to do that. It's on my to-do list. Very good. Very yeah. good. So, I really like him. I mean, he Dan really Pompey, is. Good guy. Well, Dan Pompey, too. Dan, Both Dan's. <laughs> I mean, I know Dan Pompey a little bit better than Dan Campbell, uh, but Dan Campbell, I just, he is the dude. He is the big Lebowski in football coach form and is very entertaining. <laughs> That's a great way to put it. He's extremely yeah. likable. I know, but I'm just like, you know, would you think the big Lebowski could coach football? I think he can. I think he can motivate. I just think they need better players. Well, they do, but. I don't know. There's something that's still. See, I think they'll play hard for Dan Campbell. I do too. They just need talent. I, I, 
I worry though how much I, I worry about two things. I worry about you can play hard but still make mistakes because you're not fundamentally sound or um, you take it over the edge. You have penalties. That's why I want like the theme right now in hard knocks is how they're still making mistakes. Like David Blau, who obviously shouldn't be playing football for them in the regular season, but he dropped a snap in the first preseason game right at the end when they were trying to win. You know, they're still kicking themselves in the foot. You have to. Well, they're shooting themselves in the foot. If you kick yourself in the foot, I don't think it's the right reference there. Put it this way. You have to stop being the Lions in order to win some games. Right. We always say the Lions are the Lions. Yes. That would be an example of the Lions being the Lions. Yeah. Now, the Bears being the Bears are just maybe a notch above that, given our experience. But I like where things are headed with Matt Eberflus. I really do. I just sometimes worry, like, there's too much rah-rah there. You know, uh, actually, I'm going to give Dan Bernstein credit because I heard him say this on the radio yesterday, and I think I agree with it. Maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe Dan Campbell's the guy. I think, by the way, I think Dan Campbell's going to get them to kind of where they were more under Jim Caldwell, where they were like 9-7, and seven, you know, in the mix. Confident. Certainly not awful. But but Bernstein said this, and I agree with it. It's like, you can't be on 11 all the time. Like, you, you know, Matt Eberflus is preaching a lot of the same stuff. Hustle, run, physical, which is something I want to talk about uh, Tuesday's practice in a second. But Matt's still like relatively even keeled. And well, you, you could be on 11 if you drink that much coffee. <laughs> well, I, that's what I'm just like. At some point, when you're on 11 all the time and then you start losing games, it's hard to keep that up. It's hard to have the players still buy in the whole time. I think that's going to be the struggle there. He said, uh, Bernstein said too, he's like, you know, that's you, that's like you should have an assistant coach on your team that's like that, not the head coach. And then he's like, that's like your tight ends coach. And I'm, and I'm in my car driving, listening, I'm like, he was a tight ends coach. Like, that's yeah. where he was. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so. See, like, my counter argument to that is we saw that with the Bears where Mark Tressman wasn't that guy, where Joe DeCamillis was the. The fire and brimstone right hand man, right? The assistant head coach to Mark Tressman. Yeah, but Tressman was at like a one. Like you got to be somewhere in the middle. Yeah, I know, I get it. But he's the one who has to hold the team accountable. At the end of the day, there's the head coach and everybody else. It's still his team. Yeah. I don't know. It, it, hey, look, I'm I'm here for it. I I find it entertaining. The Lions are way more entertaining than they were under Matt Patricia, and I think those games are gonna be are gonna be fun. So, um, I have a Tressman uh, bite here. Ah, it's too long. Nah, how long? I don't know. Here, let's see if it. I think this will work. It's a Potsy asking Tressman a question. You've got some unknowns here. Do you have to be more patient? Can you not be as patient? I mean, how how how, how difficult is it? I I can't. Uh, I create a hypothetical on how I'm going to feel. I can't, I can't do that. I mean, I just, I can't, I don't know how I'm going to feel. I'm just, I know how I feel right now. I feel real good. You know, I'm excited about the game. You know, I, I don't know how I'm going to feel on, on Monday when the game's over. I'm going to have a multiple, a lot of fear. I mean, this, this is just, but it's just football. You know, we have expectations that we're going to play very well. And here's why we work hard at it. We prepare hard at it. Now we can get into all the hypotheticals where we don't have a lot of experience. We haven't played together. This is a new team. We can do all that. But 31 other teams are saying the same thing. They all are. Everybody's saying the same thing. So that's why it's exciting, isn't it? Because we don't really know. You know, we know we got a talented team. I think we all see that. we got talented players. Phil's done a great job of bringing in some young players. He's done a great job of bringing in some free agents. You know, just look across the board defensively, what we've done there. Uh, there's no doubt we have a talented team. Uh, this team likes each other. Um, but we got to play the games now. And uh, as we continue to work through the first month, we'll get, a, we'll get a good look, and you'll get an honest evaluation with content on, on where we are at the present time. And, and I mean that respectfully. You know that. I just, I just can't comment on on how I'm going to feel on, on Monday, you know, and I you could throw the question. <laughs> <laughs> Objection sustained. Next. <laughs> oh man. 
the memories, just, number one. Okay, to, to my point, I don't know why that is labeled in my computer as Tressman fired up. <laughs> so that's kind of to my point. Like, that was him being fired up. You know, you gotta, you got I guess my point is like, coaches need to be able to go, you know, find the right moments to get up to 11. You can't just be there all the time. You also can't be at one all the time. Like, you gotta know when to push the right buttons. It's part of being a head coach. So, hey, Hogan Johns listeners, here's a great offer from our friends at Masterclass. With Masterclass, you can learn from the world's best minds anytime, anywhere, and at your own pace. You can learn how to shoot basketballs from Steph Curry, improve your poker game with Daniel Negreanu, or the one that I've really enjoyed, the chess class from Grandmaster Gary Kasparov. With over 100 classes from a range of world-class instructors, that thing you've always wanted to do is closer than you think. It's all there with Masterclass. I highly recommend you check it out. Get unlimited access to every Masterclass, and as a Hogan Johns listener, you get 15% off an annual membership. So go to masterclass.com slash first down. That's masterclass.com slash F-I-R-S-T D-O-W-N for 15% off Masterclass. Peloton isn't just about bikes and treadmills. It's a team of instructors ready to motivate you 24-7. With Peloton, there are literally thousands of classes ranging from strength training and yoga to running and boxing, which means Peloton is the perfect non-judgmental space to experiment with new types of movement the level and pace that feels good for you. But what if you're super busy? Doesn't matter if you have five minutes or an hour or if you're an early riser or a fan of the evening burn. There's a Peloton class that fits into your day. Maybe you're looking for a 10 minute upper body stretch between calls or a 30 minute run before bed. Peloton is where you'll find what works for you on your schedule, wherever you happen to be, at home, at the gym, or even outdoors. They have everything you need to get your blood pumping. There's a class for everything. Whatever you're into, Peloton has the music that will get you moving. Motivation that moves you anytime, anywhere. Try the Peloton bike or tread risk-free for 30 days. Learn more at OnePeloton.com. New members only. Terms apply. Hey, that warm weather is sticking around, and for me, that means hot, tough to sleep nights. And I recently found a way to stay cool at night though. So I don't wake up all sweaty and sticky. Since I started using Miracle brand self-cooling bed sheets, I stay comfortable all night long. Using silver infused fabrics originally developed by NASA, a Miracle brand sheets are thermoregulating and designed to keep you at the perfect temperature all night long. So you get better sleep every night. These sheets are infused with natural silver that prevent 99.9% of bacterial growth, leaving them to stay cleaner and fresh three times longer than other sheets. Go to trymiracle.com slash Adam to try it out today. We've got a special deal for our listeners. Be sure to use our promo code Adam at checkout to save 40% and get three free towels. And Miracle is so confident in their product, it is back with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you aren't 100% satisfied, you will get a free refund. Upgrade your sleep with Miracle Brand. Go to trymiracle.com slash Adam. Use the code Adam to claim your free three-piece towel set and save 40% off. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash Adam. Thank you, Miracle Brand, for sponsoring this episode. Hey, by now you probably know our next partner, and it's a really cool product. Let's talk about Athletic Greens. If you're looking to get better gut health, more energy, or a stronger immune system in a really easy, natural way, you've got to check out Athletic Greens. I'm sure you'll agree that most of us are not huge fans of having to take a bunch of pills or vitamins in the morning. But with Athletic Greens, you can get rid of all of those extra vitamin bottles and finally make some room in your cabinet. Athletic Greens is an all-in-one solution, and you'll really enjoy getting your daily vitamins. So what is this stuff? With one scoop of Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. The special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. 
all of those things. Right now is the time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially as we head into the flu and cold season. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash Adam. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash Adams, plural, to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Let's talk about this game. What do we need to learn Saturday night? That's kind of how I want to approach this. Like what, what matters? Yes, the starters are going to play, but what's left to be determined that needs to be In terms out? of like roster spots? Roster spots. Okay. Um, like... Who can do what? Is there anything that you're really going to pull out of this game with Justin Fields that's going to matter? Well, you want to experience some success, some type of rhythm. Um, I think it starts at, a, at like a personal level. Like Roquan Smith needs snaps. David Montgomery needs snaps. How much they get? I don't know. They strike me as the first players that would be removed from the game if Matty Berflew saw fit. Like, they are probably on a snap count. They're not getting the 25 snaps. They're probably out there for a series each. Too valuable. Too much ramping up still to do for Roquan Smith. But they need live game experience. They should get it. How much? I don't know. But for players like Tevin Jenkins, the entire first half, every snap he gets is valuable. It's more experience at a position. He's not played at this level. Yeah, Larry I, Bohr, and like having Larry Bourne right next to him. Like you could pair them in this conversation if you want. But for Tevin Jenkins specifically, this game's important. It's valuable game reps in a live game situation. I think for both Tevin Jenkins and Larry Borum, like the whether or not they start week one is probably determined by this. Like this game. I I I think that that's probably what don't you don't you agree with that? If yeah. they struggle, then I think that maybe they go back to Michael Schofield, Riley Reef. If they knock it out of the park, then I think that they're they're starting. What do you make of Riley Reef practicing almost exclusively? I would say exclusively as the backup left tackle instead of getting reps at right tackle. I think I mean unless there's going to be a sudden shift here where all of a sudden Braxton Jones isn't the starting left tackle, uh, which I would really question. Wouldn't you at this point? I think, again, this is just my opinion. I think they're preparing for the inevitable ups and downs that Braxton Jones is going to experience, whether or not he can get out of those downs fast. Yeah. I think, well, maybe, but so I look at it more like they're preparing Riley Reef to be the swing tackle. Probably. Yeah. And it's been a while since he got reps at left tackle. So. Yeah. Unless, yeah, I, I it would be very surprising and, and confu honestly confusing if after all this Braxton Jones stuff, they said, nope. No, no, I, like, I don't think he's going to be. I don't think he's going to lose his job in this game unless it's horrendous and he gets banged up a bit. But I think they're preparing for the inevitable rookie wall. Whether mm -hmm. or not it comes early, late, if it ever, he's still a fifth-round pick playing left tackle in the NFL. There's going to be some ups and downs for him, as much as they like him. Well, and you always have to have your backup prepared, right? Yes. So, you, you know, they got rid of... Uh, who they cut the other day? <laughs> the Davenport they cut the other day. Sean Coleman. You want Sean Coleman playing left tackle for Riley you? Reef is going to be your backup. Right. I mean, so your other option is Larry Borum. Yeah. At left yeah. tackle. And I put this in my column for tomorrow. I mean, the word's out there. The Bears are still looking at offensive linemen. 100% are looking at offensive linemen. Well, there are certain things come to fruition. Time will tell, but they're they're calling around and looking around. So watch that waiver wire 
when some of these cuts start coming in after this weekend. But tackle, guard, Both, center, everything, all, all the around, above. all the above. Yeah. yeah I, I think that's going to be the case at a number of positions. I at Wide receiver, too. How about cornerback? They are surprisingly light at corner all of a sudden. Very light. There's not a lot of depth there. Jalen Johnson, Kyler Gordon, Kendall Vildor, and then you have Tavon Young, Thomas Graham Jr., guys who haven't practiced in weeks. I know. Then you go to Duke Shelley. It's the same thing at wide receiver. Like when I rank the wide receivers and the two through six guys basically haven't practiced in a couple weeks, it's a problem. And everybody else, you're like, I don't think they're going to make the team. It's like, well, then who the hell's going to play against the 49ers? Five tight ends. <laughs> they don't even have five tight ends. That's the one room that looks like it's set. Yeah. I have Kyler Gordon down as a player who needs to play better as opposed to his preseason debut in Seattle. Oh, I agree. But again, context needs to be given here. That was his first game after not practicing in a bit. Only had a couple practices before that game. Of course, there were going to be some rough moments. They're also asking him to do a lot. Like If you're truly moving outside and inside as a rookie... That's all you got to know two different positions and all the different assignments within those coverages. It's pretty complex. I mean, even in a, in a defense that's relatively simple compared to what they were running before in the past, it's that's that's asking a lot from a rookie. As far as fields, well, number one, you want to see him get out of this game as clean as possible. But you want more completions like the 19-yarder to Cole Clement or some of the play passes that we know are installed in this offense are utilized. He feels comfortable. You want to see him step up in the pocket, deliver strikes down the field. You want to see him get to his checkdowns quickly. You want to see a rhythm. You want to see a quarterback who's comfortable. And there will be some snaps where it doesn't look like it. That's my prediction. But he needs to deliver like one down-the-field shot like of 20-plus yards. I think would be a, a great confidence booster for this offense. I know he's had one, right? Wasn't that Darnell Mooney one? 20 plus yeah, yards. He's had a so, couple. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, a couple big plays to come at last week that you like. Um but look, I I'll say there's a couple things I want to talk about with Tuesday's practice. So a couple days ago. Uh first of all, for for them to say that the, we're doing a mock game week and then to have the pads on and be that damn physical. You you and I were sitting there watching this. I loved it. I can't expect that to be the norm every week during the season. I think that that is more likely, hey, we're just coming right off a of training camp. We're still in the preseason. We got 80 guys on the roster. Yeah. But, you know... I don't think it's a bad idea to have pads on on Wednesdays and get after it a little bit during the season. I think you got to be smart about it. But the, the thing I said to you, I think I turned you in practice that day when like the days of baby and these guys are over. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I there'll be a point where come November where practices are lighter just because they, they always offer teams. You have too many injuries. Too many bumps and bruises. You have to get these guys to Sunday. Veteran days, a lot of walkthroughs. That's just how practices evolve throughout the season. There's just less contact. But right now, with Matt Eberflus using the words identity, like establishing that identity, the way we want to play football, that's part of it on Tuesday. They want to be physical. They want to be aggressive. And this applies to both sides of the ball. So I love that practice in terms of Matty Bufflew's trying to get that identity going, knowing that he's going to have lighter practices this week. Yeah, I, that was that. <laughs> there were times where we we're like, "Are they going live right now?" Or what was that? No, no one, one was like, going to the ground, or at least not intentionally. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. Guys, we're going to the ground. It was like yes. really, it was it was thud, but it was hard thud. Roquan Smith had one of those. Yeah, right off the bat. 
apparently we're not supposed to talk about that anymore. I don't know. I'm interested in terms of like this is our first glimpse of him back after his Holden. Yeah. Like how angry. Like what does an angry Roquan Smith look like? I know we talked about this in the past podcast, but this is the game. This is the start. Even if it's five or six snaps, because again, I don't think he's getting many. I want to see that tenacity. It's going to be there in the first snap. You know that. I'd give him a couple series just because this is a new defense for him. He's got to work out some of the kinks. See, I think he'll be on a like a 10 snap limit. Something sure. like that. That's Montgomery fine. might be like five. He might get two carries and a opportunity to pass block. That's about it. I'll tell you what, though. If Montgomery's only getting five snaps, Khalil Herbert and Tristan Ebner, we haven't seen them practicing. Darrington Evans and Demontre Tuggle are going to get a lot of playing time in this oh, game. Yeah. yeah. I think Evans is on the roster, by the way. Interesting. So four running backs then? Mm hmm. Technically five if you include the fullback. Yeah. It's going to be a run think, first team, Adam Hogue. I think one of those two fullbacks are definitely on the You're team. You're going to need yeah. more. You're Other ones more. on the full uh, practice squad. And if you look at Ebner and Evans, though, they could play in special teams and have. Khalil, Her Khalil Herbert's had kind of a rough preseason. Not always practicing, struggle in pass protection a little bit, still hasn't really proven he can catch the ball. I mean, you handle the ball on a run play, he seems still seems like pretty pretty good, but there's other things yeah. you gotta do. Yeah. We were asked to give fantasy predictions or, or fantasy developments from training camp. And the one that I submitted, check this out on the athletic.com right now, is the it's going to be a running back by committee. But to your point, I'm not questioning what I decided to, to, to input. But David Montgomery has been saved for a, seat, for a reason. And you're almost wondering if they're wondering if they need more from Khalil Herbert. But then you have Ebner and Evans coming in. I'm interested to see what this backfield rotation looks like. Because you just look at the 49ers. They rotate guys in and out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But don't the Packers have one of the best backfields in, in the NFL? Yeah, but it's still mostly the Aaron Jones show. Yeah. But, yeah. They drafted, they drafted the guy in the first round last year, did they not? Like two years ago? I think it was the second round. Second round? Yeah. The kid from uh, Boston College took a head off a mascot this summer. You see that? What's that? Um, AJ Dillon, the guy yeah. with the giant quads. <laughs> I was about to say the guy with the big yeah. guys. No, the second round pick in uh, 2020, and uh, he was at a some minor league game in Wisconsin, I think. And oh, had, oh he went yes. head to head against the mascot, like they yes. lined up against like each an, other, like an Oklahoma drill, yeah. And he just popped them, and the mascot's head flew off. <laughs> so, I mean, I hope the guy that, was okay. That reminds me of which mascot was at the Pro Bowl that got slammed by Jamal Adams. Do you remember that in the sideline? Ooh, I don't know. Like, if, like the guy was oh, concussed. Oh, yeah. And then there was the um, the guy with the, the uh, boom mic thing. A couple weeks ago at the Bears game, they got taken out. Oh, he's in bad shape, by the way. Really? It, yeah. It's not my story to tell, but talk to Pat Finley about that. Like how bad? Like bro just broken bone or worse than that? Uh, like his leg is messed up, beyond messed up. Oh, no. Yeah, I feel bad for him. Well, prayers and out to that guy. Yeah. Wish and that was him. not his full-time job either. Oh, man. So Car Mark Carmen told some story on the post game about how he got asked by somebody in the middle of the week, hey, do you have anybody who could do that job? And he, the guy he had in mind couldn't follow through. So Carmen was taking the blame for that. Because huh. otherwise, I don't think that guy would have been standing there in that position. No, no. It's crazy. No, not my story to tell. Maybe Pat Finley could be a guest on here or Hellas Intrigue. But okay, interesting. Well, I hope I really hope he's okay. That's, Same here. It looked bad. It looked bad in the moment. So it's it's dangerous down there. Yeah, it is. 
I've been, I've only, I'm, I'm actually surprised the six years I did sidelines Northwestern. I never got taken out. Yeah. Where are um, you at on the sidelines at Carmel? Are, are mean, you in the booth? You're in the booth or are you on the side? No, no, I'm on the sidelines. Yeah. Yeah. Have you right had there. to jump? Have you had to jump over collisions coming your way? Uh, I had one play last year where my shoe got taken off. Okay. Like somehow, somehow it was a diving catch on the sideline. We caught the ball and, um, I jumped up to like basically jump over him. And then somehow only my shoe got taken off and my shoe flew 15 yards. Wow. Yeah. And how many times are you reminding your players to get back? Oh, all the time. Yeah. Well, technically, it's a penalty if they're it's true. Too, too close. So, yeah, that's a constant. And, and for us, too, as coaches, yeah. yeah, we need a get-back guy. Maybe you can come out and be our get-back coach. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> Try to hold J-Mac? Try He's to hold a him lot back. bigger than me. <laughs> Good luck with that. Tackle him. <laughs> you could not tackle J-Mac. Ankles. Go for the ankles. ankles. Okay. <laughs> um. All right, anything else from this game Saturday? No. Oh, I, oh the other thing I was going to point yeah. out from Tuesday, though, just let's go back to Justin Fields for a second. Like, that was not a great day for Justin Fields. There were some passes, some foul balls, even that short one that went off Darnell Mooney's hands. Like, yeah, you got to catch the ball. You're an NFL wide receiver, but. When it was not in a good position. When high. you're 10 yards away from the guy and you're throwing the ball 90 miles an hour, like. Got to have some touch. Yeah, he seemed surprised by it too, Mooney, that it came his way. There was some oh, open on the other side. Yeah, that was the other play yeah. where we 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 saw the mismatch pre snap. Yeah, Cole Komet was against a the linebacker. They should have been able to. Like kill. Joe Thomas. Was it Joe or was it Matt Adams? One of them. Well, regardless, it, we're sitting there pre snap. We're going, oh, mismatch, and then Justin never even looked that way. Which we don't know what his reads and keys are in that situation. So you know, maybe he. Did the right thing, for all we know, based on what the coach is wanting to do. But, yeah, it just, look, there's there's continuing to be some ups and downs here, and that's fine. I think overwhelmingly, I don't want to say overwhelming, mostly positive, in, I would say, in training camp in the preseason from the quarterback. But you want to see that continue Thursday night, especially, I'm fr- sorry, Saturday night with uh, a lot of snaps. All right. Success and rhythm. A rhythm into success. There you go. Rhythm would be nice. Rhythm is something. You said when's the last time we saw the starters playing a preseason game like a whole half. When's the last time we saw rhythm on offense? Yeah. Mark Tressman. Remember that run of like first possession scoring drives? Oh, no, I don't remember that. <laughs> I think it was him. Another thing I've tried to was just not Matt Nagy. Push you out of my... No, the Bears were the opposite. They could under neg. I want to say it was Mark score. Tressman who had that. Okay. Always had a lead. We that spent, would make sense. Because we want to apologize the, for talking about way too many former play callers on this podcast. I know. I kind of feel bad. It's all right. Here's your Luke Getzy note. I like what he's installing. I do too. And that's where, like, if you're going to mention the Nagy era, it's like a reason why. Justin Fields is gonna not make it in Chicago. Like, shouldn't you mention what they're doing now? Like, okay, one more Venet. Like, that's what they tried to do last year behind two long term starters in this league. Okay, not one long term or one long term starter in any dollar. That's what they wanted to do last year, Mike Martz. Like, oh, so have them sit yes, behind a veteran. Like, yeah. yeah. Oh, never mind. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, last thing we wanted to do is just kind of give a shout out to uh, speaking of high school football, all the student athletes out there that are starting their seasons tomorrow night. Good luck to everyone. Uh, I'm excited about it. Some big Matt Loyola's on ESPN on yes. Sunday. Maybe that's cool the for them. I'm out cheer on Loyola. Yeah, I know. As much as I'm an Ignatius guy, that, that's a Catholic League Northwest side joke. Everybody. Um. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, of of course. They're they're the number three team though in our state, according to Michael Bryan of the Sun Times. Mount Carmel, with former Bears running back Jordan Lynch as their head coach, is number one. Mount Carmel plays St. Rita. It's the one hundredth meeting between the two schools. Is it really night. this? Wow. Yeah, 
at Mount Carmel, which is pretty cool. Both their head coaches are alums of their school, which is cool. Um, my alma mater, San Ignatius, is legit. We got this five-star defensive lineman, Justin Scott. He's got offers from everywhere. He's you're a not, beast. You're, you're not exaggerating. No. No, I looked him up yesterday. <laughs> He's got like everywhere. 40 offers. It's insane. I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the first one. Like that's listed as like Toledo. It's Bowling Green. Bowling Green. Okay. Yeah. And then you go down like, oh. You start scrolling down. You're like, oh, there's Miami. There's, there's Michigan. There's, there's Michigan State. There's <laughs> Nebraska. There's Notre Dame. There's Oklahoma. There's USC. Wisconsin. But he's only a junior. I know. I know. Which is crazy because if you watched them in the playoffs last year, he would have been a sophomore and he was just like the biggest guy in the line. So six They're, five three uh, ten junior. Okay, Michael Bryan, check out his stuff on the Sun Times. Good friend. Um, what does he have them at? Number sixteen. Ignatius. Ignatius. Good. I'll right. give the I'll give the top ten real quick here. Let's do it. This is just shout outs to kids that deserve it, man. They're working yes. hard. They're From working. Chicago Sun Times. My guy, Michael Bryan. Number one, Mount Carmel. Number two, Lincoln Way. East, always a good program. Number three, Loyola. Number four, Batavia. Number five, Bolingbrook, always good. Number six, St. Rita. Number seven, Glenbard West, always good. They run like a 3-3-5 three, three, defense, complete chaos. Number eight, Prairie Ridge. I think they still run the triple option. Number nine, Warren. And number 10, Kankakee. Kankakee made it to the state championship last year, lost to Fenwick. Fenwick must have lost a bunch of guys. I think they did. They graduated a lot of D1 players. Yeah, probably why they were so good last year. My, my Dons play, uh, they open up with number 19, Willowbrook. Then they got the rivalry matchup against St. Pat's at ND. And then number one, Mount Carmel in week three. So that's a tough slate. Yeah, they got tough so, to, to open up again the back-to-back -back years. But they made a run last year, won the Prep Bowl Championship. But they got to survive the first three games this year. All right. It's fun. I'm excited. Tomorrow night, Carmel, Antioch. Should be a fun game. There's just so many unknowns in the first week. You're Good like, luck. Yeah. You, you know, you you need to get a game under your belt to really understand. You don't really know until you have a real game. Yeah. So you, can, you tend to have some optimism, right? But, you know, then you see. Um, so... Uh, all right. Well, we, good we luck to everyone. Do, uh, weekly segments in high school football, by the way. Oh, so you're all for that, but not the college football talk we used to do. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> Kevin gets his 15 seconds with Northwestern. That's all we need. Yeah. Okay. I'll take the trade. I don't think I would have done that trade a couple years ago, but now I'm down with it. High school football. You're Thursday. rocking your caramel hoodie. I see it. I am. Got Four one centers. more, one more practice tonight before the real thing tomorrow night. I could have put, I we could have played last Friday. Now Thursday nights used to be like the big speech night. What do you have prepared? Well, I'm not in that position to give a big speech. I'm just not even to your guys. Player. Like, what do you, how do you break your huddle for uh, the kickoff or kick return to start the game? Uh, we vary it. You know, sometimes it could just be like you know, Carmel special teams. Other times it might be something a little bit more uh, PG-13. Yeah, <laughs> I like it. I like it. I like what Justin Fields did the other day. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. We should mention times. that. We got, a, yeah. we got a shirt for that already. Yeah, good times and throwing dimes. That's good. Good times while throwing dimes. New shirt available in the Hogan Johns collection from Obvious Shirts, by the way. I was down there it. yesterday. Saw Joe and Devin and the crew. It's a good place. We might do a show from there, from the Obvious Shirt store soon. We're talking about it with them. Oh, I love that idea. Yeah. So uh, go check. If you haven't been down there, you should. It's down by right by Wrigley. You go, it's like a block from Wrigley. It's awesome. Good location. Um, but also ObviousShirts.com if you want to check out our collection. Everything's restocked. The hats, the T-shirts, the hoodies. It's almost hoodie season. I'm wearing one right now. I'm wearing a hoodie. 
not the Hogan Johns one, but um, with the walking bear. People love the walking bear. So it's all available for you on obviousshirts.com. All right. Well, we need to get out of here. Follow us on Twitter at Adam Hogue, at Adam Johns, Reed Johnsy, Kevin Fishbane, that story we talked about earlier, Dan Pompey. It's all on The Athletic, theathletic.com slash Hogan Johns, where you go to get a good deal to sign up. I'm at allchgo.com and shows every day at noon, Monday through Friday. Uh, if you want to check us out there, the CHGO YouTube channel. All right, we'll see what the Bears do. Saturday night, we'll be back next week to break it down and um, see if the Bears are headed to the Super Bowl by next week. See ya. (laughs) 